So what is OGenerator Learn to Compose? Well, it's a music software program that allows your students to compose music and also learn about music. I'm going to show you how it works and then I'm going to show you the teaching resources and how it works within the classroom environment. First thing, let's go into the Create Your Own Tune section. This allows you to load up your instruments. So we're going to go for rock percussion, electric bass guitar and a chorus guitar. Then we're going to continue into the O generator. So we have a bar of music which has been turned into a circle. So you can see that if you play at these points, you'll be playing on the one, two, three, and the four, four beats to the bar. And you can see that it's been broken up into sixteenths. The instruments I've loaded are up here in the corner. You've got your chorus guitar, your electric bass guitar, your percussion and your drum kit. You've got simple volume controls in which you drag either which way to change the volume for each instrument. Then you've got your play pause button, which allows you to get the playhead going and pause it with the same button. The bar restart takes you back to the beginning of the circle. And then we have our tempo button down here in which you can change the tempo. At the bottom here, we have our bars. Now, the one with the square and it's a light, that tells you the bar you're on. So we are on bar one, this is bar one. And then your copy and paste function down here in the left-hand corner is going to allow you to develop your music. So firstly, let's just concentrate and see how we put our music together. So let's turn it for everything apart from the drum kit. Right, so if you take the cursor to the pad, you'll see that if you go to the left-hand side of the pad, you can click up. And if you go to the other side, you can click down. So let's click up so you'll see the different parts of the drum kit. You've got bass drums, snare drums, all the different parts of a drum kit. You can go back down through them, or you can delete the pad by just clicking on that small little circle. It deletes what's in the circle. So the first thing a student's going to learn is to play the bass drum on the first beat of the bar. So put the bass drum on, and let's get the playhead going. And then it's all about where you play in the circle. The snare drum will be playing on beat two and also on beat four. This is your basic drum beat. And then it's all about where you put the bass drum to develop your rhythm. So let's start adding in bass drums. So you can see you get good results, quick results quite quickly. And the students can manipulate the rhythm by maneuvering where the bass drum goes. The other thing is that they're going to learn, they're going to learn about the different roles that the drums play. So if I go up here, we can put the tom-toms in and the tom-toms give us a drum roll. So they start exploring how the drums get their sounds. Then it's all about combining the rhythms. So what we're going to do is we're going to put on the percussion and maybe turn off the drum kit and we can put in our hi-hats. You've got hi-hats, ride cymbals, all sorts of things in there. So the first thing they're going to learn is they're going to put the hi-hats four beats to the bar. Let's see how that works with the drum pattern. We'll put the drums back on. So you can see, you can start looking at simple music principles like playing in quarter notes and the effect that that has on the rhythm. So what happens if you go from quarter notes to eighth notes? You put more in the bar, it starts driving the music. So we can see what the effect is. Put the drums back on. The great thing is you can start mimic what, mimicking what a drummer would do by putting in open hi-hats. So combining open and closed hi-hats. So that's how you put your rhythms together. So once you've got a rhythm, you can start putting your music over the top. So we're going to go to our bass guitar, turn off everything apart from the, the bass guitar, and then in here, chromatically, we've got all the notes of a bass guitar in there. So let's put in an E minor. So put an E here, and you don't need to put much in there to make it sound good. You can start teaching them very basic music principles. So just three notes. Once you put the rhythm in, it starts sounding really good. So the other thing we can do is we can start putting the guitar in and the idea of showing how chords work with different notes. So if I put my chorus guitar on, you'll find that I can click up and I can create a melody line. Or if I went down the other way, I've got chords. So I'm going to put an E minor chord in there, put my bass back on. Let's see how that sounds. Then with the drums, created a great piece of music in just one bar. 
Okay, the way you develop your music is you use your copy and paste functions down here. So we're going to copy bar one. So if we go copy bar one, then what we need to do is we need to turn on bar two. Turn off bar one and the square will jump over to bar two. There we go. And then we use our paste function. Let's paste in the drums only first. There you go. And then that allows us to develop the drum pattern. So let's add in, let's add in some uh, bongos maybe. So we're just changing the rhythm just slightly. That sounded pretty good. Now we can paste in our percussion and see what we did before. This is what we did before. And maybe add in, let's add in some ride cymbals. Got the bell of a cymbal. You can change where you put the, the cymbals. You'll find that there's a whole range of percussion in the actual percussion circle. So there we go. Put the drums back on. That's working. Now, we, so that we can hear the difference within this bar, we'll go to the bass guitar, but put in a different note. Rather than uh, an E, we'll put in a G, and maybe we'll put um, an E in down here. We'll match that with the chords. E. Put the drums back on. And that's our second bar done. So now we can put bar one back on again. And then we can take a listen to what they both they sound like together. So we turn everything off so we can see and hear, see and hear it working. Bar restart. Press play. Now if you watch the square, it's going to go from bar one through to bar two. Let's put in, add in our percussion, drum kit, and the bass, and there you have it. Two bars of music created quite quickly and quite instinctively. So now I'm going to show you how you use the teacher's resources to teach a lesson. So you go into your teacher's guide and then you select your lesson. In this case, we're going to select lesson one, creating a drum beat, the three easy steps. It takes you through and it outlines what the, the class is going to be learning. They're going to be learning fourth notes, eighth notes, sixteenth notes, and the, the role that a drum kit plays in, in music. And here's a picture of a drum kit so they get a sense of, of the instruments that they're going to be using to create their rhythms. This is what the screen's going to look like after seven steps. So this acts as a reference point for you and for the students. It allows you to wander around the classroom and see that they're on track. After you've done the seven steps, they can carry on and this is what it's going to look like at the end of the lesson. After the lesson, you can summarize it and uh, then you can get them to move on to the lesson quiz and then the apply section. So, what they're going to be doing is that they're going to be going through to lesson one, which looks like this. So they'll, they'll go into the O instructor, select lesson one, as instructed by you. And then once you go in, you'll see that there's the O instructor, our virtual music step-by-step -step audio lesson teacher. The continue button is flashing. Every time it flashes, they have to click on it and they will be guided to the outside uh, by the outside screen numbers 1 to 16 to the different pads. So I'm just going to go through a few steps. Um, if we move forward, it would have asked them to turn off everything apart from the drum kit. So we're going to turn off everything apart from the drum kit. And then it also would have said go to pad 1 and put the bass drum on the first beat of the bar. So we've done that. So now I'm going to go and click on continue and see what it says. This is the bass drum playing on the first beat of the bar. For the second step, go to pad five and click up to snare two. So, it's continue buttons flashing again, we'll get the next instruction. Pad five is the second beat of the bar, so the snare drum is playing on beat two. The third easy step is to go to pad 13 and again put in snare two. So there you have it, fourth beat of the bar, snare drum, continue. This is the fourth beat of the bar the third of our easy steps. This should sound familiar. Listen to this a few times. Try clapping at the same time as the snare drum on beats two and four. Press play. There you go. 
And that does sound familiar in many ways. This lesson would continue on. They pause the music and there are 51 steps in this lesson. After they finish the lesson, they can move on to the lesson quiz. And in the lesson quiz, it answers some questions that they've learned within the lesson. So where do we put the bass drum for the three easy steps? Well, it's beat one. So they do this, then it moves on. Uh, where do we put the snare drum in the three easy steps of creating a beat? Where would you put them? On beats two and four. And then there's questions on the drum kit, the roles that they play. Um, after they finish the quiz, it will tell them what they've got right and what they've got wrong. And then they go to the apply section. And this is the fun part in which if they clicked on the continue button, it would ask them, it would challenge them to see if they could put the three easy steps to creating a drum beat to this music here. So they're trying to remember, all right, where do I put the bass drum? I put the bass drum on the first beat of the bar, snare drum's on, beats two, beats four. And then where are the hi-hats? Hi-hats playing four beats to the bar, and they can start hearing the music. If they get it wrong, it doesn't matter. The, the most important thing is that they see if they can apply the basic principles that they've learned in the lesson to some actual music. So that's how our instructor works. It's, um, it's an engaging way of getting them to learn some basic music principles where they can work at their own pace and um, at the end of the day, hopefully they would have learned some very basic ideas about music and how to put it together. With No Generator, there's a whole array of videos. So if you go into your teacher's guide, you'll see that there's um, videos on ways to use O Generator, how to use the copy and paste functions, how to arrange your music, how to uh, create a riff or rap to a track. Also, you can uh, print out your schemes of work. You choose a lesson, and then you'll find that there's notes on the lesson, the activities, uh, and points to note within the lesson, and you can print that off for your records. Also, you'll find that um, there are a whole series of lessons. Um, we've broken them up into rhythm, and you've got uh, basic melodies, looking at pentatonic and triads, arranging your music, and then you've also got um, songwriting, okay, which is songwriting, which is really popular. Uh, what we've tried to do is to stimulate ideas for writing lyrics. So the idea of writing uh, uh, choruses and verses and choosing a subject and writing about. So one of the cr major things about O Generator is it's great for uh, doing projects in which you start doing songwriting. We show you how you go through that process. So O Generator allows you to change the music into audio files. So if I go back and we go back into O Generator here, um, and I just take a tune, you'll see that up in the corner here, we have a record tune function. Um, and if you create your music, click your record button, let's call it our song, and uh, that will change that. If I save this, it will change it into an audio file. And this allows you to take it and put it into another device like Soundation or GarageBand. In this case, we're gonna use GarageBand. And we're gonna take that audio file. And there you go, there's our O generator file. Um, and that allows you to create your backing track and then you can start putting your vocals over the top and recording vocals. Here's our little example. Here's a tune I wrote for you. Here's a tune I wrote for you. Here's a tune I wrote for you. Nothing too sophisticated. So, in terms of um, actually creating your own loops, this is an important thing about O Generator. Rather than it being a preset loop, the students can create their own favourite loops and then they can put it into uh, whatever sequencer that you're using. So, it's real creativity in the sense that they're creating the music and not just using predefined loops.